Hello Wastelanders, Wanderer here. Welcome back to Fallout New Vegas over in Vault 11 where we left off last time. Going to be exploring that this episode as well as going and hopefully getting Veronica hooked up with the followers so she can do some good in the world. Um, so just kind of exploring around here, looking around, seeing what we can see. Um, it's really odd. So we found a holotape with a recording that had, I believe, five people talking on it about how they didn't deserve to live or they wanted to commit it was like they're having a suicide pact or something not sure what that's about but that's what it seemed like anyway but there was one lone dissenter who said no we should not commit suicide we should go and tell the world about what happened we should we should spread the word so it doesn't happen again um unfortunately there were four gunshots and there were four skeletons in the upper entrance area so it seems like four other people did die. Whether or not the fifth person actually killed them or not, I don't know. Also, interestingly, the dissenting voice, who would I uh, would assume is the one that lived, sounded quite a lot, well, he, it was the same voice actor as the one that does Newbark Noonan. So I'm kind of curious if that was actually Nobark Noonan. I don't know. But we're going to start exploring through here and figure out the mystery of this place, and then we'll take Veronica up after we're done and uh, get her set up with the followers. So let's take a look around. So this is a classroom. There's a terminal over there as well. I guess I can check that out. Let's see what this one says. Okay, Vault 11 Election Guide, Notice of Postponement, and Overseer Order 745. Okay, Vault 11 Election Guide. Dear fellow Vault Dwellers, congratulations! Your dedication to the democratic process is the bedrock upon which the continued stability of Vault 11 is based. Now, to help you make your decision for this year's election, the Coalition of Vault 11 Voting Blocks has put together this handy Vault Dwellers official guide to obtaining overseers democratically, or do good, that contains a summary of the leading candidates for overseer as well as their statements, key positions, and most importantly, endorsements. Sincerely, Rob Gottlieb, Chairman, Coalition of the Vault 11 Voting Blocks, President Justin Block. Okay, first candidate, Henry Glover, Endorsements, Utilitarian Block, Divine Will Block, Allied Service Workers Block, I'm a devoted husband and father of six beautiful children. My oldest, Sam, was on the honor roll this quarter and I couldn't be prouder of him. My youngest, Henry Jr., just said his first word and it was Dada. We've got this bond already, and he's still just a baby. Friends, when you go to the polls this election, I want you to think of your own children. Then I want you to think of Sam and Henry Jr. Picture their faces. Nate Stone should be over... What? Nate Stone should be over here, not me? That's weird. He just got done, like, talking about how wonderful he is, and then he he wants someone else to be over here, okay? All right, well, moving on, candidate Donna Haley, endorsements, Human Dignity Block, United Vault Technicians Block. I'm aware of the rumors circulating about me. I want everyone to know that they are vicious lies being spread by the other candidates in a desperate smear campaign. I have never in my life done anything so depraved, let alone for such things, but even if I had, that still wouldn't mean you should vote for me. What? Even if I had, that still wouldn't mean you should vote for me. Consider the fact that I am grossly underqualified for the position and that both of my opponents are far more deserving. I know nothing about governance. You would be hard-pressed to find a worse candidate than me. I can promise you my, my administration would be a disaster. <laughs> okay, so they're all saying that you should vote for somebody else. How humble of them. Okay, Nathan Stone, and Endorsements Justice Block. This is ridiculous. I shouldn't even be a candidate, and I wouldn't be if it weren't for all the dirty backroom politics going on around here. It's sickening. You should all be ashamed. That's really bizarre. They're all saying, don't vote for me. Notice of postponement. Fellow citizens, due to the tragic events of the past days, the Coalition of Vault 11 Voting Blocks has unanimously decided to postpone the election for overseer pending further investigation into the murders. Your security team wishes you to know that they are working tirelessly day and night to find the perpetrator and are already following up on a number of promising leads. God willing, if the killer is apprehended swiftly, we may have found a promising new candidate for Overseer. Sincerely, Terry Hart, President, Human Dignity Block. Wait, are they saying they're going to make the murderer the new candidate? Is that what they're saying? Surely not. Okay, Overseer Order 745. 
Effective immediately, the traditional selection process for Overseer is hereby ended. In lieu of a yearly election, a citizen will be chosen one month prior to the start of his or her term with our mainframe's random number generator ensuring complete impartiality and fairness. Catherine Stone, Overseer. That doesn't make a lot of sense, guys. Doesn't make any sense. I guess we'll find out more later. Okay, so I think the only place I have to go here is downstairs. So let's go down here and see what is going on in the lower level here. I guess Veronica was already down here killing rats. Okay, public terminal and terminal. Let's see what public terminal says. Okay, this is all the same stuff. Oh god, no! Oh, jeez. Well, I didn't die, but severely injured. Wonderful, addicted to Hydra, that's just great. Wonder why that was booby-trapped, though. Okay, living quarters, let's see what's down here. Alright, more insects. Are they fighting each other? For the that's a really big explosion. Whoa, god, d double explosion. Oh yeah, I should be uh, using more stim packs, shouldn't I? So we've got female dorm over here, and then admin over here. Let's see what the female dorm has here. Just, you know, random stuff like you'd expect to find in an area like this, you know? Okay, so we have some posters here. Glover has done nothing wrong. Vote for Stone. I hate Nate, but it's changed to Kate. Haley is a known adulterer and communist sympathizer. Elect Haley for overseer. Don't vote Glover, his family needs him. Rumors about Haley are baseless. Vote Stone for Overseer. Yes, yeah, more the same over here as well. Oh, this is on the loading screen. Like, I see this all the time. There's a new sheriff in town. He's looking for deputies. Become a part of the Human Dignity Block. Yeah, you see that on the, the uh, loading screen all the time. Oh, here we go. Roy Gottlieb's terminal password. Roy was, um... I forget who Roy was. I just read it, I know, but I've forgotten already. Personal terminal. Welcome, Mr. Gottlieb's. This is Roy Gottlieb's terminal. Um, security recording. Okay, download that. And we've got the rest of the stuff here as well. Okay, note added. Why did it say HQ? Justice block, HQ security tape. She can't do this. It's done. We're done. Nothing's done. She's got the authority. The only thing she can't do is change her own fate. Nothing says she can't change the selection process for future overseers. I say she can't. You shouldn't have toyed with her like that, Roy. We still have the majority. We don't vote for anything anymore. I'm not talking about voting. What then? You want to have a sit-in? A hunger strike? Not exactly. Maybe march into her office with torches and pitchforks? Yes. Come on. I mean it. What? Start a revolution? Laws don't outlast their governments. Roy, all we have to do is wait until someone from Justice Block gets picked for Overseer. Then we have them change the law back. There won't be any blocks after the new Overseer is picked tomorrow. Everyone's going to move on. By the time we've reformed, who knows if we'll still be in the majority. We can hold the block together. You don't know that. Besides, what if the computer picks you? What if it picks me? And your solution is to start shooting? Not if we don't have to. Look, we arm up. We go to the lower floors, take some strategic targets. Power, food, water. Just until she turns authority over to us. The other blocks won't support it. They're tired of us having the power. We have the majority. We don't need them. This isn't a vote, Roy. They'll fight back. They've never had the nerve. Hell of a way to test it. Well, that's... I don't know. What to think about that? What's his terminal password? His password was found shamefully close to his creator's computer terminal. 
That's right, guys. Do not keep your passwords on post-it notes. This is coming from your local library system administrator. Do not keep your passwords on post-it notes next to your computer. Very, very bad. All right, so, yeah, I don't know what to think about that. Um, so there were, like, various blocks. It just sounds like way too many political parties here, all vying for power, all trying to elect someone, and then... But they're all telling people to vote for somebody else? I don't understand... Okay, well, so these go- one goes to male dorm, one goes to female dorm. We've been through that, it kind of loops around. Only way we can still go here is admin, I guess. So we got overseer and security. Okay, let's see if we can get in the overseer. Actually, we'll do the security first because it's on an upper floor. Let's see, I can get this open, I'm sure. That much problem. Oh, you guys want to fight stuff, huh? Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. Thought we were gonna crash there. I'm pretty sure it's it's just Kasim that's causing the uh, freezing there. When it tries to save, like right when I exit combat, it just is like I don't know, it's weird. Computer doesn't like it. Wow, pretty heavy stuff here. Heavy explosives. 25 milli grenades. This guy has some good stuff here and a lot of a lot of firepower. That's for sure. So I guess security would have been part of the justice block. Is that why people wouldn't stand against them because they have all the the stuff here? Okay, so we got a security terminal here. Let's see what this says. Okay, so s more of the same stuff, but there's a deposition as well. Excerpt from the deposition of the defendant, Catherine Stone, by Vault Attorney Gerald Miles. Question. Okay, let's pick up where we left off, Kate. Answer. Catherine. Sorry, right. Catherine. I keep forgetting. Answer. My husband calls me Kate. Question. You were telling us of a discussion you allegedly had with Roy, with Roy Gottlieb of the Justice Block. Answer. Not allegedly. Had. We've been through this. Question. It's still just your word against his, Miss Stone, but please, discussion. Answer. He said my husband's name had come up in their meetings. Question. The candidate endorsement meetings? Answer. Yes, they were going to endorse him. He wouldn't say why, but I know my husband had a regular poker game with some of them, and he'd been on a winning streak lately. Question, and according to you, what did Mr. Gottlieb offer? Answer, he said he could sway the, his block, prevent the endorsement, but only if I... Question, only if you what, Catherine? Only if I... Only if you performed sexual favors. Yes. Was this just for Mr. Gottlieb? No. All the block leadership. They're friends. And you agreed? What else could I do? They had a majority. How long did this go on before the endorsements came out? I don't know. A month, maybe? And when they came out and your husband was endorsed despite your supposed agreement, was that when you decided to kill members of the block? Yes. I thought... Their majority is pretty slim. If I thin things out a little, especially in the leadership, someone else might get elected. Assuming you weren't caught. No, Mr. Miles. I was expecting to be caught. That was my best chance. Now they'll elect me. A confessed murderer? You think voters will be willing to risk putting you in charge? They have to pick somebody and live with their reasons. Yes, but wait and see. Okay, so, this is just so messed up. This whole thing is just so messed up. I'm trying to wrap my head around it. There are these different blocks vying for power. Different political parties, basically. Catherine's husband wanted nothing to do with the whole thing. He just wanted to be a good father, and he wanted to be a good husband to his wife and lead a normal life. But these people were going to nominate him, and I guess if you're nominated for the position of overseer, you cannot turn it down. If you get elected, you have to do it. So his wife, Catherine, uh, tries to convince the Justice Block people, Roy Gottlieb and the rest of the people, rest of the people in that block, to not nominate him. To not nominate her husband. But they would only do it in exchange for sexual favors from her and she agreed to do it for a month or more before the election. But then they went ahead and nominated her husband anyway. At that point, she went ahead and killed the three people that were talking, the members of the Justice Block or whatever, 
in order to thin out their ranks. If they have less people, they have less votes, which means less majority, I guess. It's interesting because in a vault, you don't have that many people, so if you had different political parties and only, say, 5 or 10 or maybe 20 people per party, if you kill some of them, then, yeah, technically they don't have those votes anymore. Okay, well, plot thickens. Let's keep going and look around here a bit more. Okay, down another set of stairs here and into Vault 11 lower level. This was where they were going to go to take over, like, power and food production and other stuff down here. That's so what they were talking about. The Justice League was talking about uh, Roy Gottlieb and his friends were talking about taking this place over. Okay, so here's the Overseer's office. Okay, so here's the Overseer's terminal. Requires a key. Alright, I guess we'll look around a bit more here. See if we can find that key. Okay, so we've got utility over here. Let's check that out. See ya. Oh, shit. Wow, that was a really long delay there. Got some assault rifle rounds here. They were trying to batter this door in. Whoa! Get out of here, rat. I can't shoot you from there. Oh, you die? Somebody got him. Huh. Okay. Well, I don't know why. There's some areas underwater here, too. I'm sure I'll have to go underwater. Down here we have... I don't know. Wish you guys would not run so fast. Good job. Eddie doesn't have his blue laser anymore. Reactor. Oh, good job, guys. Just open it up. Sure. Sorry, Veronica. You know, friendly fire and all that. That's why you're in the power armor, right? Shake it off. You'll be okay. All right, so here's the, the reactor. Lots of ammo in here. Oh, yeah. Give me those MF cells. I'm very interested to see what the whole vault tech experiment, because this was apparently set up by vault tech I'm sure. Some kind of twisted experiment, probably, to see, you know, what they could make these people do to each other. Kind of social experiment type thing. Okay, so yeah, here's the reactor room. We got some rads here. Get some radix going and stuff here. <laughs> what are you doing, Veronica? Turn the right way. Atrium. Where are you going, Mantis? Brian has got him. Okay. Prepared speech of Gus Olson, ombudsman for the annual overseer election. I don't even know what that word means, man. Probably think I'm an idiot for not knowing that, but let's see what this says. Good afternoon. Each year, it is the appointed task of the ombudsman not only to officiate the election, but to chronicle it in hopes that after the last overseer has finished his term and walked to his death in the chamber beneath his office, and the vault has become still, that one day some exca excavator for, from humanity, or perhaps some yet unknown race of super beings, might find our records and incorporate them into historical canon. What? Okay. But lately, it's occurred to me that that's not really why. I think the real reason we do it is because we want to believe that somewhere in the archives there's an answer to all of this, or perhaps there will be one when the historical records are completed and the whole story is told. We want it to make sense, to understand why the vault's mainframe will kill us if we do not offer one of our own as a yearly sacrifice. To fully comprehend why we continue to have these elections despite the unfettered corruption that has plagued it for what must be decades by now. There was a simpler time when elections meant shaking hands and kissing babies, but now with the rise of the voting blocks and this infestation of bribery, drug trafficking, smuggling, and God knows what else, we want to know why. 
Well, I've been through the archives, and I can tell you, you won't find the answer there. You'll find an account of the first overseer who entered the vault as the only citizen aware of the sacrifices that would have to take place, but he didn't have the answers either. If he did, surely he would have foreseen a citizen's anger when he broke the news. Surely he would have guessed that they would want to choose a sacrifice democratically in the way that we citizens are accustomed to washing our hands of terrible deeds, and that his name would be at the top of the polls and that the simultaneous vacancy of overseer and martyr would forever fuse the two positions here in Vault 11. But he didn't. He had the answers no more than any of us, and the records state that after the citizens discovered that the sacrificial chamber's password was his wife Betty's first name, and his door was unsealed so he could be offered as the first sacrifice, he walked down into that room crying like a child. I can only wonder if there are no answers to be found, and we are just going along with this because we don't see another choice. Nevertheless, I still hold on to hope that we can find one. I urge you all to take the journey I took, to remember that it wasn't so long ago that we were ruled by our civility and our dignity, and that those were times when we didn't have to be quite so ashamed. Thank you. Okay, so this explains things. So the vault mainframe computer demands a yearly sacrifice from one of its citizens. Given that there aren't that many people here, really, that would be kind of rough. It's also interesting if you think about the implications of that. They would obviously want to get rid of their worst person, their most unliked person, or maybe the ugliest person, or just the person who was not as perfect as, as everyone else. In an interesting way, it would actually force people to be on their best behavior. Uh -oh. Okay, so we have an atrium terminal here as well. I wish you guys would stop running off and stuff so I could just talk. I have them on passive, but they're still going crazy. Anyways, atrium terminal. Okay, same speeches here. Same stuff. Same stuff as there. So, okay. Nothing else up here, it looks like. Oh, crap! God, that's a mine. Cafeteria's in the mine. Or, mine's in the cafeteria. Okay, just having ourselves a look around here. That would be an interesting thought experiment, though, to put people into a vault and uh, just say, well, you know, you guys can have everything you need for a very nice stay in the vault here. And the only uh, other thing you have to worry about is that uh, once a year you have to sacrifice one of your own. And if you don't sacrifice one of your own, then everybody dies. It's kind of like that uh, Batman and Joker experiment where Joker tries to get the convicts in the boat to blow up the normal people, and the normal people to blow up the convicts. Is there anything actually down- oh, we can go underwater here, okay. Guess that means yes, I'm gonna get a save because, you know, I always die in these areas. Wait, I have that rebreather, don't I? I kept it with me, right? Yeah! Oh, thank god, we got water bre the water breather there. Okay, this makes things so much easier, so glad to that quest. Even though that's like a rebreather, it seems more like you just have infinite breath. I mean, I'm not losing any O2 at all here. Huh. That stuff all went up top there with it. Let's take us out here. So I guess that's the um, other side of it. There were two entrances there that I saw. So I guess that's the other side of it there. So, I want to see now if I can get into the Overseer's office with that password, that Betty's password. Still Mantis around? Oh god. Run away. No, run away. I can't shoot you from that close, man. Okay, let's find our way out of here and get back to the Overseer's office and see what we can find out there. Differential Pressure Controller. Okay, that has to be an important item. Okay, I think it was already over here. So that's utility. Okay, so we going back up here, yes, yeah, so we went... We came from this way. And here's the overseer's office. Can I get in his terminal now? He has to go... He had to go down below and sacrifice himself to the mainframe. Or perhaps did they not choose someone and the vault killed them all. Yeah, okay, open sacrificial chamber. That's kinda ominous. 
I don't know that I would go down in here if I was in this position, you know, because uh, you might get sacrificed. Congratulations, Martyr. Your fantastic journey is only just beginning. Please proceed to the light. The light is calming and puts your mind at ease. Go to the light. Okay. I I don't know about this, man. This is probably a bad idea. I'm not ready to die yet. Welcome. Please sit in the chair. The show is about to begin. Okay. Greetings, Martyr, and welcome. If you're here now, it means you've been offered up as a sacrifice so that your vault can continue to thrive. Currently, you may be feeling sad or angry. Perhaps you never got to have grandkids or to enjoy the pleasures of a fresh cigar. But march with your chin held high, soldier, and remember that each of us has an important role to play. For some people, their role might be to heal the sick. For others, it might mean they will drive a race car or fly a rocket ship. And some of us are meant to forfeit our lives for the good of the people. Sure, it might not be as fun as driving a race car, but it's every bit as important. Let's take a moment to reflect on the moments that made your life worth living. Think about that time you kissed your steady girl for the first time under the bleachers at the big game. Or when you snuck out after curfew to catch that new flick that your parents wouldn't let you see because it was too scary. Boy, were they right. And who could forget when you met the love of your life? What a looker. These are just examples. Do you feel that feeling stirring in your chest as you think of these things? Good. What you are feeling is peace. You've led a great life. Living it has been its own reward. But it is only the beginning. Close your eyes now and imagine what joys await you in the next life. The afterlife. Can you see them? Good. Uh oh. Um. Whoa! Jesus Christ! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! Alright, um, okay. Let's put on let's put on the good weapons now. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay, yep. Alright. The good ammo it is. Okay. This is crazy. Let's hope this works, I guess. Am I... How am I crippled? Or over-encumbered? My god. They actually weren't kidding. All these freaking robots, man. Holy crap. vault Tech Power Armor. They give you- yep, there's a helmet, too. Let's see what this is. Ooh, that's very nice. Very nice indeed. Very heavy, too. The scanner gives you the ability to analyze potential enemies over long distances to help on deciding if and how they should be approached. To scan something, aim at it while zooming or using iron sights. If it's a valid target, you can press 1 to start the scanning process. Okay, because it, it's like, you know, vats, right? Oh, that looks pretty cool. So what happens when I... Oh! Okay.
That's cool. It's really heavy. Well, that was quite exhilarating. Now I have to let all these drugs wear off. So... I guess they appeased these guys, though, or maybe when they didn't obey, it just killed everybody? I'm not sure. I don't really understand what happened. It's just a whole bunch of corpses over here. Okay, we got a terminal over here. So there's the mainframe. It says it will kill people if they- if it'll kill everybody if they don't, uh, send a sacrifice yearly. Let's see here. So I can override lockdown, and I can do system recording, Vault 11 solution, and automated response, Vault 11 solution. Okay, so... System recording, Vault 11 solution. Okay, there's that, automated response. Download both of those, and override lockdown. Okay, let's see what these recordings are. Okay, system recording, Vault 11 solution. Alright, I know you can hear me, so listen up. There's five of us left. Five out of... I don't know how many. So, it's over. We've talked and it's over. We're not gonna send anybody to die anymore. So shut off our water, our gases, or do whatever it is you're programmed to do. But we're done listening to you. Okay, so there's only five left and they said we're not gonna do it anymore. We're done. Uh, automated solution response. Congratulations, citizens of Vault 11. You have made the decision not to sacrifice one of your own. You can walk with your head held high, knowing that your commitment to human life is a shining example to us all. And to make that feeling of pride even sweeter, I have some exciting news. Despite what you were led to believe, the population of Vault 11 is not going to be exterminated for its disobedience. Instead, the mechanism to open the main vault door has now been enabled, and you can come and go at your leisure. But not so fast. Be sure to check with your overseer to find out if it's safe to leave. Here at vault Tech, your safety is our number one priority. Wow, that's freaking messed up, man. That's messed up. So then what happened then? Did the, the one guy up there went crazy and cut everybody? I'm not sure. Okay, so I want to listen to this system recording from the front entrance one more time, and uh, it, hopefully it makes more sense now to me. Are we really gonna do this? It's open, we could just leave. I couldn't, not after that. We don't deserve to leave. A shining example. That's what it called us. But we were, we did what we were supposed to. Not by a long shot. Anybody would have done what we did. You ask me? That's exactly the problem. Now let's get on with this. I'll go first. Wait, wait! People should know what happened. They could learn from it. If there's anyone out there at all, I hope they never have to find out. Ready, Harry? Yeah. No, no, no! Wait! So I noticed this earlier, but I didn't say anything. A lot of the people in this game have, uh, a lot of the voice actors have multiple roles. You hear them voicing multiple characters. But in this instance, I'm not quite so sure that it's just coincidence. The voice of the only survivor, the one that was arguing against suicide, it sounds like the people, the five survivors or whatever, could not live with themselves. Um, and they said, in the other recording, they said that there were five of them left and that was it. Everybody else was dead. Apparently because of, uh, you know, they were trying to, Justice Block was trying to take control of the lower levels and they were fighting and people were killing each other. Um, so there were only five left. There were four gunshots, right? And there was a sigh afterwards. The one person who was arguing against it, who wanted them to stop, who said they should go out in the wasteland and let people know what happens so they could prevent that kind of thing in the future, that was the same voice actor for Nobark Noonan. And so far, I don't think I've heard that voice actor anywhere else but that character. As to where other characters, I've heard their voice actors um, throughout multiple characters, but they weren't quite as important. Now, Nobark, of course, is kind of crazy. He's He's kind of lost it, right? He doesn't, he doesn't have all his marbles anymore. What if the reason he doesn't have his marbles anymore is because he was part of this experiment 
And, well, everybody killed themselves except for him. He was the sole survivor of Vault 11. It's an interesting theory. I don't know. I'll have to, I might have to go and look it up, see if Oxhorn's in a video on this, and see what he has to say about it. You've got that look on your face. <laughs> you got that grimace on your face, Veronica. Sometimes she gets stuck like this, and it, it's really funny looking. Yeah, you're really funny looking, Veronica. Okay, anyways, guys, let's get out of here and go get Veronica her new, uh, her new faction, the followers. Okay, here we go. Followers outpost. Hopefully the person is finally here. What the hell? Wait, are they, are they all dead? What happened here? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. That's, a. Uh... That's the Gatling laser, I think. Sharing knowledge with an outsider organization, I knew Veronica couldn't be trusted. We tracked your movements a long way, but it was worth to catch her in the act. Passing Brotherhood secrets to outsiders is the lowest form of treason. What have you got to say for yourself? How could you do this? How could you murder these people? They're, they're just trying to help people. They're like the nicest people out here in the wasteland. They're just trying to help. How could you just murder them? I don't know what to say, guys. Like, you know, I like the Brotherhood and all that. Like, I'm a big... I like power armor. I like technology and all that stuff. But this is just... I can't believe this. If this was approved by McNamara, then I'm declaring war on the Brotherhood. I'm saying, no, they're, they're evil. They are... This is just... I, I don't know what to say. They murdered not only innocent people, but people that were trying to help other people. Veronica has not shared any secrets, and you don't have any proof otherwise. She has made her intentions plain. We will not risk any further damage. In the name of the Elder, I hereby sentence you to death. Oh, uh, hell no. Hell no. I sentence the Brotherhood to death. You cannot stand, guys. You cannot stand. This is... Honestly, I can't believe it. This is crazy. Sorry, Veronica. It was necessary. Uh, I'm gonna need some new limbs. Me too, Veronica. Me too. What the hell, man? Well, we gotta level up at least. I, I'm still shocked, guys. I can't believe they would go that far. The brother would go that far. It's just crazy. I think the next thing I want to pick up here is probably uh, medicine. Can I put points into that? Okay, I think I'm gonna go with toughness now. I want to, I want to get this max out eventually. Um, there's no really big things I need for damage or anything right now. So yeah, we'll just go with that for now. So holy crap, guys! I just can't believe what just happened. Uh, but hey, let's go ahead and get some stuff here. One's got a tribeam laser rifle. It's completely destroyed, but, uh, so this one has T-51B power armor, which is pretty good. It's better than what Veronica currently has, I think. Missiles, T-45. God, I did this. This was my fault. Why didn't I see this coming? Of course they'd track me. Of course they'd assume the worst. Sure, I left them, but that didn't mean I'd ever be free of them. I should have known I was beaten before I began. I just... I had to try, you know? Wow, all these options are pretty nasty. Just join the followers somewhere else. No, not a chance in hell. I'm not risking this happening again. I'm gonna have to keep to myself. Better that way, for everyone. I'll still finish what I started with you, though. If you're not afraid, that is. I'll just try not to get too caught up in it all. Veronica has received the Causeless Rebel perk, which boosts her unarmed attack rate. Okay. Well, that's, uh, I guess that's her quest, then. What do we have here? Auto gauze. Well, I guess I'll take all these doctor's things, too, because, you know... 
Well, there's a regular Gatling laser. I guess I don't have to buy one now. I think you can mod these, whereas you can't mod the one that I got, the special one. So I think that's actually kind of better in a way. We got here another tribeam. These guys had good stuff, man. Should be more than that. Or was it just three? Did I get everybody here? Oh, no, there's one more here. Yep. Can't tell which one's... Like, I, th I would think the T-51 is better, right? Gives you charisma and strength. This just gives you rad resist. Yeah, these, it's like a direct upgrade. But what about compared to the other power armor? Um, Veronica, give me your power armor. And Eddie, give me that other power armor I found too. Yeah, the vault tech stuff. I'm gonna save before I do any repairing here, but I want to see uh, like what's what here. Which is the best? The vault tech stuff is is obviously like full. It looks like it's the same stats as the T-51 stuff. Like, it, they have plus one strength and plus 25 rab resist. This also has plus one strength and 25 rab resist, and 25 versus uh, 25, or 27 versus 25. So it's, this is probably 27 whenever you get it repaired fully. This is a tad bit lighter, I guess, but uh, what looks cooler? That's the, that's the most important thing. I hope Veronica doesn't get mad because of this. Oh, my leg is still broken. Uh, okay, it looks like Brotherhood of Steel. I, I don't even know if she'll wear that though, honestly. Like, she might not wear it because it's Brotherhood of Steel stuff. Ooh, got something good for me? Is it a dress? Let's put you in the Vault Tech stuff, Veronica. I think she'll wear that. But I don't think she'll wear the Brotherhood stuff. Ooh, got something good for me? Is it a dress? Seems awfully cruel to make her wear that stuff, you know? Okay, let's see. We got an auto gauze. This thing needs repaired. This uses 2mm EC charges. So this is a gauze rifle, but apparently it's automatic. What if I just equip it, use some repair kits on it? One more should do it. Wow. That's a lot of DPS, man. So it's not really automatic, it's just... Well, it does shoot fast. Alright, it's pretty cool. It does a lot of damage too, man. Like, this thing, it's precise too, which is crazy. 76 per shot, and it's energy damage too. So yeah, it's an energy weapon. Well, I guess we found our new weapon here, boys. I think I have mods for this too. I think I saw mods and I, I bought them, so... Alright, I don't need the power armor here. Let's take that off. Just gonna save all this power armor to repair Veronica's if I need to. Oh, I should use the pulse gun against them. I totally forgot about that. Nope, Eddie is full. Okay. Alright, well that was extremely, extremely sad um, that these guys got killed. I honestly can't believe that. I'm gonna have to go and have a chat with the Brotherhood about this because that's just freaking insane that they would do this. I mean, I guess it is in their codex and everything and all that. God, she lost her leg too. So, that's gonna wrap up the episode, guys. Um, next time, man, that is shiny armor. It is really shiny armor. Those eyes look disturbing. But anyways, next time, we will go and confront the Brotherhood about what they have done, and see what to do about that. And I think we will finally be heading into the strip after that. So, thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you next time. If you're enjoying the series, make sure you like and subscribe. Share it with your friends. Help my channel out so much. And I will see you next time in the Mojave.